Welcome to the Triathlon Training Explained show powered by Training Peaks. This week we are looking at how the foot lands when running, breaking down the heel, mid and forefoot strike. You've quite likely heard terms such as he's a forefoot striker or listen to that heel strike or look at her, she's definitely landing on her midfoot and variations of that. Well, the way in which our foot lands when running has long been observed and the perfect style is going to be continually debated. Yeah, now unfortunately we are not going to have any magic answers today as to how you should be running. But what we are going to do in this video is talk about the different types of styles that we have seen and talk about particularly what's happening down there at our foot as it strikes the ground and the overall impact that will have on our our gate. There are three different categories of foot strike. The heel strike is as it sounds when the runner lands with their heel touching the ground first and the rest of the foot follows through. And as the body weight of the runner moves off, they finish with a toe off at the final phase. And then we're moving on to mid foot strike, which is as you'd expect, essentially the initial and predominant force is the foot landing in the middle and then pushing off. And then finally, we've got the four foot strike, which is essentially landing right on the ball of your feet with almost no engagement from the remainder of your foot, the mid foot and the heel. So how do you find out what type of foot striker you are? Well, there's various options. You could get someone to film you, even a friend filming you on the phone in slow motion will give you an idea of how your foot's landing. Then you can take a look at maybe quite a well-worn pair of trainers that will give you a bit of an idea of where the wear is. And finally, for your running on an impressionable surface like some tacky mud, then you can look at your footprint just to give you a bit of a guide. There are so many factors to consider, both internal and external, and you have to actually look at them all together. You can't just look at one and decide that's how you run and why. Instead, you need to look at the bigger picture. First up, if you're a seasoned runner, then you're likely to have spent years training on the track doing speed work, and that's naturally going to encourage a forefoot to midfoot type of running style, as that's obviously efficient for going fast. And as a result of this, you're likely to have the strength to hold an efficient running position, and you're naturally going to have a bit of a forward lean with that gait. Now, sprinters, when they're running, must definitely land on their forefoot, whereas when we're walking, we must almost land with our heels first. And generally, anywhere in between those speeds will have our foot striking somewhere on that spectrum. But as a general rule of thumb, the faster we're going, the shorter the distance, that's gonna promote a forefoot landing. Whereas if we're going for a longer distance, we're A, gonna be running a bit slower, and we're probably gonna be out there for much more time, which is gonna be difficult to maintain any sort of forefoot strike. Therefore, that's gonna promote landing on our midfoot or perhaps even a heel strike. Running on different surfaces is automatically going to change your gait. I don't know if you've ever looked at your footprints, say, in sand compared to when running on asphalt. Well, they're going to be completely different. The looser and the softer the surface, then obviously the naturally more shock absorption you're going to get, but you're also going to lose more energy as your foot moves through the stance phase. If you're a heel striker, say, and you go onto hard ground, well, you're going to find that hard to maintain as there's very little shock absorption. And naturally, if you move onto a soft surface, then you're going to find yourself shortening your stride and leaning further forwards in order to maintain momentum. Now most foot strike analysis is admittedly done on the flat, but if you add an uphill or a downhill, this is significantly going to impact on your biomechanics. Now imagine running up a steep hill and trying to do anything other than push off on your toes. You're going to have to have extremely flexible ankles, Achilles tendons, and even calf muscles for that to be possible. Reverse that and conversely, going down a steep slope, if you aren't landing on your heels, well, you're going to have to be leaning extremely far forward for anything else to be possible. But Gentle slopes are equally going to have an impact too. It's just more dependent on your own personal foot strike as to whether this has a larger or lesser extent, whether you're going up or downhill. The length of your limbs and your natural posture will have effect on the way you walk, but that becomes more notable when you move to running. And your weight also, as the heavier you are, then the more shock that's going to be going through your body and your foot's going to have to do more of the shock absorption. And it also means your muscles around your foot will have to work harder, especially if you're a forefoot or a midfoot runner. 
Now, the marketplace these days is full of a wide array of shoe choices, from the ultra barefoot minimalist right through to the fully thick cushion shoes at the other end of the spectrum. But what you choose to wear on your feet will have an impact on your running gait and ultimately your foot strength too. Past and present injuries will also have an effect on your running gait. If, say, for example, you've had a bruised heel, then you'll probably find running on midfoot or forefoot more comfortable. And then on the opposite end of the spectrum, uh, problems with your calves or Achilles, well, that will actually make you maybe lead towards a heel strike or a midfoot strike. And then problems further up the chain, such as tight hamstrings or weak glutes, will also affect your gait. Now this really is the million dollar question indeed. What is the perfect foot strike? It's a question that has been debated for decades really. And there really is no one size fits all. You just have to look at the professional runners on the track to see how much variation there is and how their foot strikes the surface. So how do you narrow down what is right for you? Well, you hear coaches talking about foot contact time being the key to fast running. So the shorter the contact time, the better. Well, this is the amount of time that your foot spends on the ground. Now, obviously a midfoot to forefoot foot striker is gonna spend less time on the ground compared to a heel striker but throughout a race you're quite likely to see that contact time increase as the runners start to fatigue. Now a study looking at recreational marathon runners found that in a certain portion of athletes there was a massive increase in the number of runners heel striking at the 32k point as opposed to when they were looked at in the 10k point which I suppose just proves that it is very demanding for your average runner to maintain a midfoot or a forefoot running technique for a long period of time and it has actually also been proven that the heel strike is metabolically less demanding on your system meaning there's easier for you to do. However, that's then going to be putting more force through your skeletal system. So you might say, well, you want to move towards a midfoot to reduce this. But then trainers now are more cushioned, which can help with that impact and actually quite often start to encourage more of a heel strike. So I think that just proves that there really is no perfect foot strike. And it depends on what natural style of running gait you have, but also what your goals are. Now, by trying to alter our foot strike, we really need to start looking further up the chain at our body position and also our stride length too. By correcting things like tightness and poor posture in our running gait, that's naturally gonna affect what's happening at ground level. Well, overstriding is usually the cause of excessive heel strike, and this is then going to increase the force and the jar that's going up through your bones and your joints, but also it's gonna be acting like a brake on every stride. So it's one thing to say, well, just shorten your stride and get your foot to be landing closer under your body, but this is only possible if you've got enough flexibility at the front of your hips so that your body can actually move forwards and through and over your foot in the gait. Now, an increased lumbar lordosis or being too upright in posture and having tight hip flexors are all gonna to contribute to having an over stride which then really makes you have a heavy heel strike so try and address your hip and your lower back flexibility with mobility exercises and think about increasing your cadence too. Now we've all talked about having a desirable posture so try and think about having a line that goes directly from our heads down through our shoulders our hips torsos and into our ankles and then take that as a slight forward lean while maintaining a tall posture and then that will hopefully allow you to bring your foot strike in closer to your body and then shorten that stride. Well, to help with stride length, work on increasing your cadence, like Fraser said, but also look at trying to run on different surfaces, as this is naturally going to cause your foot to be constantly adapting and quite likely to actually help you start to run a little bit lighter. And then on top of that, think about reducing that amount of time that you've got the contact on the ground. If you think of running soft and smooth, you'll find that this naturally starts to increase your cadence anyway, but also brings your foot more underneath your body when it comes to the foot strike. Now the running shoe industry has evolved dramatically over the years, it's safe to say, with fashions varying widely from having very overly structured and cushioned shoes right through to the barefoot minimalist style of shoe as well. Well, the barefoot style of running promotes naturally a forefoot strike, so those shoes don't need as much support, and they're also gonna have less cushioning throughout the shoe as well. So if you were a heel striker though and tried to wear running those types of shoes, you would feel a huge amount of shock coming up through your heel, your knee, and the rest of your musculoskeletal system as there's nothing to dampen that down. So for that that style of runner, you want to look for a more cushioned shoe with a heel raise that's going to help naturally promote your style of gait and actually give you that cushioning you require. Yeah, now if you are somewhere in the middle of those two ends of the spectrum perhaps, then you could have a look for a shoe that has slightly less heel to toe drop. But if of course you want to see a video about how to choose the correct type of shoe, well we're going to throw to that at the end of this video. 
If it's not broken, don't fix it. Admittedly, it is easy to watch your favorite pro running and think, oh, I want to run like them. But if you're currently running injury free, well, make the most of that and then just concentrate on working on little bits of your form if you go. Yeah, absolutely. Now, hopefully you've enjoyed this video we've done today. So please hit that thumb up like button. Don't forget to find the globe on screen and get all the other videos we make here at GTN. And if you do want to see that video I talked about, about choosing the right pair of running shoes, well, that is here. And if you are interested in barefoot running and want to know a little bit more about that, we've made a video on that just down here.